Okay, I know, I know, this might be the most hip hipsterish, hipsterish that I've ever looked, but it's okay because it's uh, it's actually legitimately freezing, like it's snowing. So the hap, the the cap, and the wow, I can't talk today. Should I be doing this video? Probably not. The cap and the sweater are absolutely necessary because it's it's very cold. All right, guys, my name is Josh, and I want to talk about why I have the desk and the methodology behind the desk setup that I currently have before we get into all the technical aspects behind it. So my methodology was I wanted a clean, multifunctional workspace to where I could have a great listening and working experience from everything from headphones to speakers to all the video creation that I do. So I wanted something that was aesthetically pleasing, but also sounded good. And I definitely didn't want to have strong compromises when it came to speakers. So I wanted to have them properly set up in the right area, but also look nice. Now everything top to bottom is built to be super useful and highly functional and more importantly, adjustable and adaptable. And this covers everything that I use from the hotkeys to the position of my actual monitor and the speakers and how I can raise my monitor or lower it depending on whether I'm listening or if I'm working. Everything is heavily curated and heavily thought through. And if you have your own setup and you have any ideas, feel free to take them, please. I want everybody to have as useful as a desk setup as functional and as beautiful as a desk setup as you guys can get. That being said, let's start off the tour, starting with the speaker and the lighting array. That is probably the main attraction to really what you notice first when you look at this desk. Now I wanted something beautiful to look at and also functional in this area. So the lights are purely for looks and also, you know, being able to see. Um, and they light up the speakers, which are on the stands, which I can't remember the name of. They're not really important and they're not very good. So I don't recommend them anyways. But when I'm sitting up straight at the desk, uh, the speaker tweeter is exactly at ear height. Now, not only that, but they are exactly an equal distance from each other as they are from me. So it creates that perfect equilateral triangle that pull off the walls a little bit, even though those particular ones are front ported, so they don't need them as much, but they're not right up against the wall. So the sound quality is Boino. And speaking of speakers, this is where I enter in the two daily driver speakers that I have. Those that you see up there are the Kef Q100s, and these are the Mica MP or MB42XCs. These are two center channels from Mica, and both these speakers actually are powered off a Oregon speaker amplifier. Now, it's only a 50 watt speaker amp, but I am in an apartment complex, and this particular room, the office that I'm in right now, is actually fairly small. So for pretty normal listening volumes, uh, that amplifier is plenty clean and sounds very, very good. And it's, it's plenty of power for the personal listening that I do here. Now, regarding the headphone setup that I have, I run that setup off of a Grace S-Stack. It's just a USB powered and uh, the audio signal is also fed through USB to the Grace S-Stack. RCA to the NFB1 amp that you see over there, and that is holding my daily driver pair of DT1990s. Now, I actually only have two headphones that I use on a daily basis, being those DT1990s, which are an incredible headphone, by the way, if you, just incredible. If you haven't seen the review of that I've done, check out the link down below. I'll put all the uh, reviews of products that I've already reviewed. There's some products that I have here that I haven't reviewed that I will in the future, by the way. Anyways. And then uh, my second daily driver headphone that I use for work, going to the gym, going to the store, daily life type of stuff, work calls, stuff like that, are Apple AirPods. I actually have about, I think, four other headphones that are on like long-term loans to uh, those in need, let's call it. Um, so I have, you know, friends and family who didn't have a pair of headphones, so I loan them mine until they get their own. Now, my actual desk is kind of the anchor that ties this whole setup together. And the purpose of this desk, short of the actual speaker swapping, is to be able to access and do everything I could want to do for either working or listening from my desk within an arm's reach, not having to move literally at all other than just reaching over to get it. So what do I mean by that? Well, I've done a couple things to make my life like really efficient and really easy when working at my desk because I, I work at my desk for a large portion of the day between editing videos and listening to the products that you guys send in for review or products of my own comparisons, videos like this. If I'm not filming and if I'm in this room, I'm definitely sitting at the desk uh, editing for the most part. <laughs> desk is actually, I think it's an Ikea Malm desk, M-A-L-M. And it's got uh, cable management underneath. I have my computer, my PC, I run Windows underneath as well. Now, actually on top of that PC and underneath the desk in between those two, I keep the Grace S-Stack. That way it's hidden because there's no buttons or anything that I have to press to make that work. So I just prefer to be tucked away, out of sight, 
in an area where it's not going to get damaged, nothing's going to fall in it. It also clears up some space on the desk. So that's running RCA out the back into the NFB1 amp. And uh, to the far right, an area that I use for as kind of a multifunction area where it's, it's available desk real estate. It's very important for me to have that way if I have a new amplifier or if I need to store something on the desk, I have lots of room to have additional things on there, a lot of expandability. And in that area sits a very important part of my setup being the target fake plant. <laughs> now, as far as my peripherals go, I actually use an ASIO mechanical keyboard. I plan on changing that out to a wireless one eventually. I don't know which one yet, so nobody ask. I also, on any given day, switch between a G303, a G305, and a G603. Those last two are wireless mice. I highly recommend them. I use them a lot for editing and things like that, and the G303 for gaming. Okay, and then you may have noticed the big-ass monitor behind me. That's the Mastrop Vast ultra-wide monitor. It's a 1440 100 hertz. Absolute beast of a display for the money. It's ridiculously good for the cost that it comes in at. Not only is it great for gaming, but I use it for editing and the color accuracy really helps me. Anyways, I like that monitor a lot. Huge shout out to uh, Mastro for making that. It's, it's pretty good. And something that matters to no one but me, but one of the best features of that monitor is the fact that it, it raises height. Now, a lot of monitors do that, but why is it important? You may be asking. Probably not asking that. Nobody's actually asking that, but whatever. Let's pretend that you asked me that. And it's like, well, good sir, probably named John or something along those lines. Uh, the reason why it's great for me is because it's at, the middle is basically at eye level when it's raised all the way up. So it's very healthy back posture while I'm editing or while I'm working, browsing the web or anything like that. But we all know that monitors <laughs> tend to wreck center imaging when you have two pairs of speakers. This setup is no exception. It's a little bit better because the speaker is pulled away from the, or I'm sorry, the monitor is pulled away from the wall. Um, but I can actually lower that monitor so that the center image is not, it, it's still affected a tiny bit, but not as affected as just having the monitor right in front of it. I lower it to where the top of the monitor is actually below where the center image is coming from. And it makes a big difference when judging a pair of speakers or listening for that absolute clinical type of, of you know, really analytical listening. That helps me a lot. I love that feature. Super underrated, the monitor is worth it just for that alone. <laughs> now under the desk, I try and keep a lot of useful stuff like these two remotes. These are on the right side of my desk. Uh, this is the volume and uh, high low gain and headphone pre-out switch for the NFB one amp. And then these actually control the lights, RGB lights. I can control how bright they are, on off, etc. stuff like that. That's pretty fun. Now on the same side, I also have three mounts for additional headphones at the bottom of the desk. So that's super useful when I don't have a place to store them and I just kind of want them tucked away out of sight or if I have multiple things that I'm listening to at the same time and I can just slip it under, it's perfect. Now on the left side under the desk, I have my PC obviously, that gray sack that I was talking about and a utility knife and a little uh, thumbtack that holds my watch when I do long editing sessions because it just gets kind of annoying on the wrist after moving your hand around a lot. And almost all those things are tied in with little Velcro straps. I, I find that to be the best way to kind of keep everything to where you can just pull it off, stick it back on again and again and again, and it doesn't really degrade over time. So now we're gonna talk about the actual PC because that is part of the setup. Now I'm not gonna talk about the PC components, more just what's on the PC. And what I mean by on the PC is like what software I use and stuff like that. So I use a software called FUBAR2000. A lot of you are familiar with it. If you're not, just Google FUBAR2000. That's, in my opinion, the best music software out there. It loads the quickest, especially for somebody like me who has a just a shitload of music. It also has highly customizable, not only looks, but hotkeys. And hotkeys are one of the main kind of uh, creature comforts that I like to take advantage of. So I have hotkeys for everything from, you know, play, pause, to where it's just one key. I just hit that, plays, pause. Most of them are global. And there's a couple other things that I really enjoy using that I have for one key press hotkeys, essentially. Um, and the main thing that I use it for is switching between the headphone output because I have USB going to the Grace S stack and I have optical going to the OR gain for the speakers. So I have, a, I think I have F9 dedicated towards the headphones and F10 dedicated towards the speakers. So while I'm playing it, I just hit F9, it's playing out of the headphones, F10 is playing out of the speakers. I don't know why it's so useful, I just love being able to switch all the time. It's super quick, one key, just super fast. It's it's literally instant. And I want to go through menus and stuff like that. So not a big deal, but if you listen to stuff for as often as I do, um, while I'm editing, I use the, you know, the headphones for editing and then I 
usually use uh, the speakers for web browsing or YouTube or whatever I'm doing. And then just being able to switch between all those, it's super nice. And then a small little thing is like, I have a five terabyte hard drive for my music and my um, movies. I keep those all in the same place. I think that's gonna wrap it up for what actually makes up the desk setup. Uh, there's a couple things that are going to change though in the near future. This desk is being swapped out for a white desk, kind of like the one that I film on a lot, but I want to have a dedicated filming area like I currently do. That's white and I also want this desk to be white. I think it's going to look really clean there. The new desk is also going to be a little bit deeper, so that's going to be nice. Um, some things that are going to change in the future, I am planning on getting rid of the NFB One app. I really like it as an owner. As a reviewer though, I think there are some cheaper and better options out there, specifically the THX, but nobody told you that. And uh, hopefully I can find one to buy on the used market when I sell that thing. Um, but I'll review that first, of course, before I sell it. And it's gonna kind of be a slower process. The headphones are here to stay for sure. The speakers I'm thinking about swapping out. Very happy with the performance of those, just I'm kind of in the mood for something different and speakers is something that I wanna kinda of get the ball rolling on getting reviews in. So if you have a pair of speakers that you wanna send me for review, I'd love to check them out. So email me in the link description down below. And then uh, and then there's gonna be some kind of accent color changes that I wanna make. Like I wanna get a, I wanna kinda of go with the white and black theme that I have going on here, but with a touch of teal. Um, I kinda of wanna throw in that. I think it'll look really cool. But anyways, I think that's gonna wrap it up for early uh, 20, 19. I'm curious what early 2020 is going to look like if we even get there, <laughs> uh, which uh, I, hopefully we should. YouTube is, is getting kind of kind of busy and, and crazy now, which is amazing. But um, yeah, so that's the setup for early 2019. If you had any things that you saw or liked or wanted to check out, there's a link to everything in the description down below. All right. I can't think of anything else to say about it. So my name's Josh signing off.